All right, guys, welcome to a brand new episode of SideQuest Podcast. Listen in and level up. I have a great episode for you today, but first, as always, let's get through the show notes. If you're not following the Facebook page, head over to Facebook, type SideQuest Fitness into the search bar and like the page. There, you're going to get updates on podcast episodes, articles when they get posted, and you're going to get a brand new taco recipe every Tuesday for Taco Camp. Uh, plus lots of other shenanigans and nerd talk throughout the week. So make sure you head over to Facebook. You can follow me on Instagram. My handle is SideQuestFM. If you want to see some cool videos and random stuff on Instagram as well, you can follow me on Instagram, same handle, SideQuestFM, or follow me on Snapchat, SideQuestFit. Follow me there. Send me your questions. Uh, I want to get all the questions from you, help you as much as I can on your fitness journey or your journey in life, whatever it may be. But head over to Snapchat, SideQuest Fit, follow me there. You get a little more personal, in-depth look at the shenanigans I get into throughout uh, every day. Uh, But I do love getting questions from the community, so please send them out to me. If you have not left a review for the podcast, please head over to iTunes. If you're not listening on iTunes and you listen on SoundCloud or Stitcher, leave a review there as well. When you leave reviews, it helps me move up the charts on the iTunes store so that more people can see and hear the amazing guests that I've had on and have on each and every single week. So make sure you head over there. And don't forget, if you haven't picked up your copy of The Seven Principles of Fat Loss, head over to sidequestfitness.com forward slash seven principles, and you can pick up your copy of The Seven Principles of Fat Loss. These are the same seven principles I follow each and every day and teach my clients to help them shred away more body fat, unlock heroic strength, and just look better naked. So if you want to unlock strength or just look better naked in the mirror, head over again, grab those seven principles of fat loss, and start following those today. What's up, guys? Welcome to the show. So over the last few months, you have heard me talking about my online clients, and you've heard from a few of my online clients as well about what they've done uh, on their fitness quest with me. With summer heading in, I am taking a few more clients on to help people get ready for summer, help you get ready for uh, bikini season or swimsuit season, or maybe this is your first time. Maybe you've decided that that's it. You want to get in shape, and you need someone to help you with your journey on your journey. You need a Gandalf uh, and a Samwise to guide you as you head into Frodo. And I am your Gandalf and Samwise all packed in to one. I am taking on a few more clients. If you are interested, head over to sidequestfitness.com slash coach and check out the page. You can apply there. You can find out more about what coaching entails and also see some of the amazing transformations that my clients have had while working with me. So head over to sidequestfitness.com slash coach and apply today. All right, guys, welcome to the show. I have a great, great, great episode for you today. My good friend Peter Baker returns to the show, and we nerd out. Like, we get deep on some really nerdy stuff uh, with Harry Potter, uh, some Star Wars, uh, and then just some ridiculous things all throughout this show. One of my favorite shows that I've recorded so far. So I hope you guys enjoy as Peter Baker returns to the podcast and we dive deep into the world of of Harry Potter, the name of the wind. Uh, And then at the end, we talk a little bit about the booty and some butt stuff and training and the glory that is glutes. All right, guys, let's get into the show and enjoy. And if you've never heard Peter in the first episode, head over to sidequestfitness.com slash Peter hyphen Baker and check out the first episode with Peter Baker on the podcast. Without further ado, Peter Baker returns to the show. Step up and you gotta get it fitness. Host Rob at the moment and the quest is you gotta check in and wreck it. You're breaking personal records and with the help of the guests, you won't be guessing on the lessons. That's a plus five fears. Got a low key band right here. You want to meet him, there's no better way to greet him than to strike a boss pose. Take a look into the mirror. Welcome to the show, guys. I have a great returning guest for you. Uh, <clears throat> so glad to get him back on the show. Uh, if you have not listened to his first episode, then head to wherever you listen, iTunes, SoundCloud, or head over to sidequestfitness.com slash Peter Baker, but put a hyphen in between Peter and Baker. Uh, the one and only Peter Baker, welcome back to the show. 
Thanks, man. How's it going? <laughs> it's going well. I thought you were fucking with your dog again. And I was like, welcome back to the show. And then you take like 10 seconds in like silence. I'm like, is he, is he playing a joke? What is he doing? No, I'm not playing a joke. I was supposed to remove some steaks from the freezer to eat tonight. And I forgot. So <laughs> well, what's for dinner tonight? Uh, some sort of Acapulco steak tacos. Um, that sounds delicious. Uh, it will be. We do sometimes this thing called Home Chef. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but uh, we could throw a link in there and uh, I can get $30 <laughs> credit. And whoever else uses said link, they could get $30 credit as well um, off their order. But basically what it is is that it, you you pick these meals that you want and they send it to you in a nice little box. And uh, they give you all the shit you need. So – if you need some obscure ingredient, you don't have to go searching the grocery store for it and wind up getting a whole ton of it that's just going to go bad. So you use it and then uh, for the, that particular meal, and then you're good to go. So it's similar it all to comes uh, in like these nice little separate. <clears throat> similar to what I did, with, uh, my wife and I did with Blue Apron uh, and, and HelloFresh. Um, but. Looks. I just looked it up on my phone. It's a little a little different. Is that just a, a Florida company? Uh, I still can't hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you now. <laughs> I can hear you now. Um, is is that company like a Florida company? Because I looked at the website. Uh, I don't think it's a Florida company, but it's kind of like this other one that's pretty popular called Blue Apron. Yeah, yeah, I did a uh, I did a review on that. Um, I actually did two articles uh, on Blue Apron, um, and then we switched to HelloFresh for a little while. My wife was like, "Blue Apron is better," um, and it is. Um, sadly, I don't have any codes to give away. Um, I like my wife gets them, but like if I send her the codes, um, some it would be like. Eight, it would give her name in the email that like wants to like give you something, and I'm like, it might be weird if like people are getting random emails from my wife. <laughs> that, that's actually a good point. Uh, actually, yeah, they do it by email. They don't have, they do have like a, an affiliate thing, but I don't think I'm a part of that. And uh, to be honest, their commission on affiliates is not the best. Yeah, I can't remember what it was, but I was not impressed by the numbers I was reading. So well, I think I think those companies. Are and I haven't looked into their to their profits, um, but I am assuming that their profit margins aren't super like they're not very large. Um, like I, I wonder if there was like a, a spinach shortage or like some sort of like some weird thing that happened in, in the food supply where it could like really fuck with them. Last time I remember there being something wrong with spinach was when I was in college because I remember the subway where all the um, where all the depressed looking people worked. Uh, they 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 wouldn't put spinach on anything for a while because they didn't have it. So I think there was some sp- sort of spinach recall, uh, yeah. which you know spinach on a sandwich is way better than lettuce. Yep, is because you you know it's you know you don't get that iceberg lettuce bullshit. You get some <laughs> some stuff actual nutrients in it and everything and uh i was very upset by that uh because i really like putting spinach on uh on my sandwiches yeah. and uh you know it's also good to take the spinach and put it in a smoothie to get a little dose of nutrients because when you do that you can't really taste that it's there so it makes it it makes sense perfectly with your your protein powder and whatever you put in your smoothies so so peter you're trying to tell me that you're not a kale guy uh, no, I did have kale recently though. Damn, where the fuck did I have kale? My, no, it was in Kansas actually with the people I stayed with. Uh, there was a kale salad and it was pretty good. Uh, I was I, really, I, I was kind of hoping that you were going to be like, kale, no, I don't like kale. <laughs> but no, typically I am not a kale person. I got you. I got you. So Peter, what have you been up to, man? Last time you came on, we, uh, we nerded out a little bit. Uh, I think we were talking about... We talked about uh, Star Wars and the imp- impending Rogue One release. We, yeah, we talked about the impending Rogue One. Yeah, because you were on for the Star Wars uh, thing, and we'll, we can talk about that in, in a second. But, but like the first first time you were on the show, um, then we were talking about Suicide Squad because it was it was like coming out. We hadn't seen it yet, 
um, sort of talking about you and your writing and, and, and your coaching. And, and uh, you know, I know we have been in the same, you know, mastermind for a while and, and have been friends on Facebook and interacting uh, throughout. And just so listeners know, because um, when you're not friends with us on Facebook, you miss out on a lot of things. Missed out on a lot. Um, a lot, a lot of things. Um, I basically, <laughs> so my wife two years ago publicly shamed me on Facebook that I had never read Harry Potter. Uh, and I got some very, uh, spirited text messages from Roman. Um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, so then I read them and then, uh, when you didn't read the name of the wind after having it for like six months, I, I just, I jumped on every, every opportunity I, I could to, uh, to throw in a, a jab at that. Uh, I appreciate that. So I didn't read Harry Potter. I didn't read Harry Potter until last year. I started whenever we left Austin, Texas the first time and I finished, uh, actually I finished in June when we were in New York. Yeah. And, what do you uh, think? Oh, dude, the books were fantastic. Like, I'm, I'm kind of glad I read them now instead of when I was younger. Okay, I, I, wanna, I, got- I, I want to explore that, and, and I don't mean to, to sort of cut you off because I was going to ask, what did you think of reading them now versus would they have affected you younger? Why do you think they affected you now more than when you were younger? Well, you know, let's see, Order of the Phoenix probably came out like early 2000s, so I wouldn't have even been 18 yet. Uh, so back then, I probably wasn't thinking, man, these guys are basically like a terrorist organization with a shitty government. <laughs> That's the kind of thing you think about now when you read it, uh, you know, when you're 30 years old. You think about that kind of stuff and uh, you think about uh, Lupin's uh, emotional state, you know, stuff like that. Go go into that. I want to I, let's 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 dig into that a little bit. Like what what? What to you? <clears throat> what stuck out to you more as an adult that maybe uh, you could understand why certain, if you had been twenty years younger and read it, it would have been different. Like, what was the the biggest point for you? I think if I'd have read them as they come out, I probably would have liked Severus Snape, but now I do not because he's basically like a a nice guy trademark. Uh, you know, he's he should have a fedora and a neck beard, basically. Uh, <laughs> That's that's basically what he is. And uh, so then every time I bring this up to people, they say, well, James Potter was a piece of shit, too. I'm like, well, no, I never said that because he was. He, he totally was. James was not a the great guy. I mean, at least he reformed a little bit. And uh, I, I guess he became a good dad based on what we know. I mean, he didn't really raise Harry. Uh, so, I mean, it's amazing that Harry came out the way he did, uh, being you know, that he lived with his shitty aunt and uncle from – you know, since he was one year old and, you know, ever and anon. So would you, in, in that instance, do you, would you say that it's nature versus nurture? Cause like, you're right. Harry could have been a very vindictive, re- like just pissed off. He could have been like, Severus. Yeah. He could have yeah. grew up to be the next Severus. Yeah. But uh, with, with the, with that question, uh, the answer almost always is uh, it's always nature and nurture. I mean, at some point, something's got to give inside your head when you realize that, hey, being in a closet's not cool. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, he did get vindictive. He became very angsty in um, book four and uh, book five, I believe. That's the one that – I believe five is the one where everybody's like, oh, Harry's too angsty. I didn't like him. I thought he was great reading it at 30. It's it's interesting that you say at, like, let's just say – I'm just going to say 11 as an age. I'm I'm spitballing. <clears throat> Excuse me, because I don't exactly know. Like the the, the first book was like ninety seven. When yes, whatever. yeah. So like I would have been eleven. Um, why do you think you would have liked Snape? Because I feel like he's completely written for like five books for you to fucking hate him. Uh, probably the same reason everybody else likes him. He did it for love, but every but you know then we all have our own experiences with that. Uh, you know, basically, if I weren't as self-aware as I am, I could have been a neckbeard, nice guy, trademark. I, right, but I'm saying at 11, if you didn't know all the – like you hadn't read all the other books. There were no movies. Like you're reading it for the first – I mean maybe this is a stupid and asinine question because you're reading it for the first time. You have like 
it's been in the world now. So like, you know, of it, you know, about it, uh, you know, then you don't. I, it, so maybe it's just a, a stupid question. Um, I, I think it could have been a thing like uh, Jamie Lannister. Everybody hated him at first. And then when you get to like books two and three, it's like, Oh man, Jamie's got depth. Yeah. He's fucking his sister, but man, he's got depth. <laughs> that, that's true. Cause like I hated, I hated him, uh, through the first three. Yeah. Cause I haven't, I've listened to like 79% of the audio book, uh, of the fourth book, but I got so tired of it. Cause it was like Cersei, Jamie, Cersei, Jamie, Cersei, Jamie, and like no one else. And I was like, I can't listen to Cersei and Jamie fuck anymore. It's getting really like, it's making me uncomfortable. Like, it's okay that I know that they're having sex in the book. Like, fine. It, it's like, ew, dirty. But the more and more it happens, the more and more I'm like, ah, oh, stop writing this. They could have, they could have been Targaryens because the Targaryens were, they kept it in the family. Yeah, I don't think that's where they're. I mean, that would be a. I think that would be a right hook that no one expected. That's not going to happen. Well, I mean, like not like literally Targaryen, not like a, a big plot twist, but uh, you know, people tend to. People tend to like Daenerys as a Targaryen, but you know she comes from a, a lineage that basically did what Jaime and Cersei did. You know, they just, you know, that was just their thing. Yeah. And um, um, go ahead. Oh man. So yeah, they they did. God, where was I going with this? So I think it, you know, I think Snape probably would have been like that if I read it whenever you know I was younger. You know, because that's what happened to a lot of people. Like, oh, here's this guy, and it's like, oh, look, he's doing these hero things because he, yeah. you know, love. And uh, oh, look, he got picked on. Oh, how sad! But he still hit kids, <laughs> and he was still a vindictive son of a bitch. So I mean, you can't you can't excuse that. Do so. One thing I I, I thought about as I was because like I've seen all the movies. I knew like, and that's that's what kind of sucks because I've never been a fan of any books that I actually did read. Um, which weren't many growing up that became movies. I always wanted to watch, like I always wanted to read the book before I saw the movie <clears throat> so that I could create the character in my own mind before like Brad Pitt is a character. And I'm like, Oh, well forever. Now I'm just going to like see Brad Pitt. That's why I've never read fight club. Cause I'm like, I want to read it, but I like, there's no twist. I've seen the movie. I know what's happening. Like, you know, it, it kind of ruins that. Um, do you, do you think that, Dumbledore allowed or even like told Severus to be uh, a complete and utter douchebag to kids and like do those things because he had to like put on this mask to make everyone think that he was, he was a death eater. Um, and then like, maybe he allowed him to do that because he knew he would let out some of the, like, I'm a whiny kid who didn't get the girl angst. Man, I don't know. Like, uh, <laughs> sometimes I think Dumbledore he had a bit of an ego cause he was controlling literally everything. It just so happened to be that he was right about everything too, which is, you know, in the end it all worked out well. And that's why we like Dumbledore, but man, if he'd have been wrong about anything, D- Dumbledore would not be a hero either. I don't think, but, uh, did anybody ever come to Dumbledore saying, Oh, Snape hit me. Like we don't, we don't know if that happened. And Dumbledore wasn't in the classroom all the time. So we don't know what he knew. Well, true, but it's but it's 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 one of those things where it's like, you, like okay, so Dumbledore is the good guy, and you think about it as in like, okay, Severus, this is the role you have to play. I'm going to turn a blind eye to like any of the things that you do. So Snape kind of gets to be a douchebag to everyone because he's having to like try and prove that he's just like dark death eater when he's really like, you know, a good guy. Like it, it's like, I, it's almost, it, it's almost sort of, um, how I feel like Qui-Gon Jinn and even Mace Windu would have been like, they were a, a little bit more gray Jedi. Um, they probably were. Yeah. Well, I mean, Mace Windu was a fucking badass. If you watch the Clone Wars, um, totally was he, uh, force crush, uh, general grievous as long and gave him that, uh, that cough, Party yeah. Wheeze. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just, like now. Now I'm like diving into it to into those things uh, in my head as we're talking about this. Um, all right. So 
you read Harry Potter in the last year. You went through that that series, uh, and and luckily you and I are both uh, uh, Slytherin. So you are the prefect of House Slytherin. I'm the token ginger of House Slytherin. Um, and I'm way better than that Ron Weasley son of a bitch. Uh, trust yeah. me, way better, way better. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. Like I, th- there. There were no like gingers in any other like house. No, I don't think there were. Were there? Like if you if you look if you look at the way they were sort of cast in the in the uh, in the movies, like all the houses kind of look very similar. Yeah, kind of. Draco <laughs> stood out. Yeah, Draco yeah. and Lucius Malfoy. They're both uh, you know blonde haired golden children. Yeah, who would you punch more in a bar fight, Draco or uh, uh, why am I forgetting his fucking name now? Um, geez, Was it one uh, of the- no Draco or Game of Thrones? Why am I forgetting his name? Uh, Joffrey. 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 Wow! Holy shit! My brain is not working today. Like I had it, and then right when I asked the question, it went it went nowhere. Like if you were in a bar fight and you had a choice of like the first two people to hit. <laughs> Who would you punch, Joffrey or Draco Malfoy? Uh, definitely Joffrey. Uh, actually, a friend of mine presented a very interesting case for uh, Draco Malfoy. She um, she's very brilliant. She's a she's a composition teacher at uh, a college, and uh, I don't know. She uh, she really likes all these these blonde guys in these movies that are highly problematic characters for whatever reason. Joffrey, however, is. He's a little, he's a little sociopathic, uh, I think, and um, generally a shithead. Like, uh, there's not much redeeming about him. Draco, however, at, you can kind of tell maybe at first he didn't want to be a bad kid, but you know he had a lot of pressure from his fucking dad, who was also a piece of shit. Yeah, and he, you know, he was dealing with. Uh, I believe, right? He left Voldemort, and uh, Voldemort called him out on it. And whatnot, uh, you know, back in the day after he killed, tried to kill Harry, uh, Voldemort forsook him, I guess. And I think Voldemort called him out on that. So, you know, he's putting that all on Draco saying, hey, you got to you gotta do this stuff, etc." So then, you know, she basically gave this defense that makes Draco more of a tragic figure than uh, we were initially led on. Oh, I, <clears throat> that I would agree with. I think I think he's the sins of the father. You know, the the son has to redeem the father, uh, which goes into a, like a whole Campbellian thing as well. Um, but like that, like yeah, all that pressure is on Draco to like to perform and make up for his father's sins, um, which I think is just true for so many people in life. And I'm sure someone out there, you know, more than just your friend, saw that in Draco and was like, I kind of kind of feel bad for him, um, while everyone else was like, No, he's an asshole. Um, uh, she she uh, articulated it uh, exceptionally well. Yeah. And um, heck, we can even put a link to her uh, cosplay page in the the description of your podcast if we if you want to. Sure, I'll go around. Um, Let's lift everybody up. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, so, what have you been up to training wise, man? What have, what have you discovered in in the world of fitness that you you didn't know uh, recently? Uh. Alan Aragon could put him away. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Legitimately impressed uh, when I realized that. Uh, Jesus, fuck. Uh, so that um, mostly I've been doing my training with, um, you know, what's funny is Brian Cron is my coach, right? You, you know, Brian. Of course, uh, I know Brian. Yeah. Brian was like, Brian was like guest number four on SideQuest podcast back in the day. I got to get him back. On oh, the nice. Soon. Yeah. He, uh, you know, he has he has great arms. My arms are better um, as a result of training with him. And he, interestingly enough, Courtney Thomas, who we saw present in Kansas City uh, the other day, she also trains under Brian Cron, and she also has great arms. So you could tell everybody who trains with Brian has really nice arms because that's his uh, that's his thing. Yeah, He's yeah, a straight bro. So I've been I've been doing coaching with him uh, recently, just so I don't have to think about it myself. So I can you know focus on the writing and whatnot. So I've just been doing a lot of uh, a lot of that. What's, so what's that look like for you? How different is that from stuff you've done in the past? 
fairly different. Uh, it's a lot higher rep, a lot more volume. Uh, you know, so it's so definitely more focused on aesthetics as opposed to um, training for strength, which I used to do solely. So all in all, it's pretty good. Um, you know, especially without the pressure of having to um, raise my one rep maximum all the fucking time, which you know that can lead to um, injury or worse. Yeah. So no, it's it's good. And he's a, you know, he's he's an old school guy. He's got years in the game. He, he knows things. Yeah. Yeah. He's Canadian and he knows things. <laughs> um. Let's let's talk a little about the the sort of difference uh, now that you you jumped into that because I know you've done some powerlifting back in the day and, and you even uh, help uh, at, I'm just gonna say you helped unfuck Lane Norton uh, when he had some issues um, so you're in and around that community and now you're doing a little bit more of of the bro stuff um, for you as as a coach as well like what has stuck out to you about the difference and like what can you sort of tell the audience about like uh, you know the the big difference between the two and 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 how one isn't like the other well well one of the big things that uh brian imparted onto me was that it's you know and i I was slowly getting there but you know he really hammers at home it's okay to train specifically to look good yeah like you know that's good and that's something you know i had to get out of my head for a long time based on where i started and whatnot you know with the those kettlebell dorks back in the day (laughs) So that's, um, so that's pretty nice, you know, and it's working. And, uh, not only that, but, uh, you know, I get to see how he interacts with people and how they do their things. You know, it gives me some inspiration on what I do for people. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, like not everybody has the barbell squat or barbell deadlift every single month, you know, that type of deal. No, not, not at all. Um, I mean, some people are, uh, you know, I, I have a client right now who's in a bulking phase and I was like, we're taking a break from deadlifts. And she was like, no, and I was like, no, it, trust me, long term, it's, it's going to be good, but you just came out of a powerlifting meet. I want, I want you to, to rest your nervous system a little bit. Um, you know, and, and you don't have to do those things. Um, I think, how does she do the meet? So, uh, she finished technically four out of five. Um, and she only finished, they had her, at, okay, so technically, I guess the way they did it, she finished last, this was her first meet, so she, I told her not to worry about, just go have fun, just put up numbers, just do do something that you never thought you would do, um, and technically she's in fourth when you do the weight thing, like her weight, she weighed less than the girl um, who technically finished fourth, so technically her relative strength was more uh she lifted more weight, technically. Uh, for those who are listening, and I'll go into that real quick. Um, so the way most powerlifting things, uh, or the way they do who wins, is if I was uh, 89 kilos and Peter is 88.7 kilos and we lift the same amount of weight, like say 400 pounds on a uh, squat, Peter technically beats me because he weighed less. So his relative strength uh, it's not absolute strength. You're you're going for relative strength, uh, you know, uh, p- pound for pound, so te- or kilogram for kilogram. Kilogram. So technically, Peter would would win in that instance. So that's sort of what happened with her. But she set her PR, which was uh, her long term goal, was the deadlift two twenty five, um, and it's uh, it's up on Instagram, SideQuest FM, uh, and you can see it over there. But she, yeah, she set a huge PR there. So um, she'll also say thanks for the shout out on the podcast. So what up, Laura? Um, but, uh, you know, there, I, I think that's one thing I've learned as well, Peter, is that, like, you can train for strength and then you can train to look really good, or, you know, a.k.a. maybe hypertrophy or just, like, actually just getting ripped and lean. Um, but it's important in some phases, like, outside of a hypertrophy phase, once you've built muscle, you should spend, like, six, maybe eight weeks getting strong as fuck um, because you want to recruit those motor neurons into the muscle that you built. Because the more muscle that you have working, the more calories you're going to burn, the stronger you're going to get. And then when you decide to cut, you're not going to have to cut down to like 1,800 calories. You might be okay at like 2,000. Exactly. Yes. And um, as you know, the research always shows that uh, 
you know, if you train for hypertrophy, uh, it yields potentially a stronger muscle in the long run anyway. Yeah. So there's that, and that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. Um, and if, like, honestly, the weird thing about that is, uh, that's something I only learned the last like couple of years. I was like, Oh, that makes sense that like, uh, you know, uh, guys who have more or have bigger muscles have the potential to be stronger because they can use more of those muscles because they have more muscles as opposed to just like, you know, for a long time, people were like, Oh, bodybuilders can't even do a pull up. You don't want to do that. And it's like, if they train pull-ups, they could probably do more pull-ups than you with like a Mack truck on their back. But that shit, Cali Muscle can do a fucking muscle up. Well, yeah, but you know, uh, it just depends on what you're training. Kind of, that's kind of impressive that he could do that because you would not expect that from a guy that looks like Cali Muscle. No, no. But the other thing is, is like, there's a lot of things you wouldn't expect from a lot of people when it comes to lifting. Um, and, and it's Cut you know, the painter. Do what. Kai Green's a fucking painter. Yeah. Yeah. How crazy. All right. So with that, Peter, uh, I will, I will ask you this, this question. Uh, what is like a, a hobby that you have that most people would be really surprised, uh, to find out that like a guy who lifts weights and, and writes and, uh, you know, talks about butt stuff all the time. Um, cause it's the best. Uh, what, what would they find out? Like, what would you tell them and would it completely blow them away? Uh, depends on who I'm talking to, but some people are surprised to find that I like to shoot guns. I'm not like at a Lane Norton level because he's, he's all about it, but I do like shooting guns and I will, whenever I can make it a point to go to a shooting range and, and practice. Yeah. Uh, and then other people will be surprised to find that, uh, I play the piano. That I am surprised to hear and did not know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was in a band for a long time. I so I knew you played bass and I knew you did some like we're in a band but I had no idea you played you played the piano. What is your favorite song, Peter, to play on the piano? Uh, video games by Lana Del Rey. Again, something I would like. As soon as you said I play the piano, I'm like, oh, I bet he's got some like he's got some like hardcore good like uh, you know uh, piano piano you know game. But I did not expect the uh, Del Rey's video games. All right. All right, you just, you're blowing me away tonight, Peter. So yeah, it's a, no, it's a good song, and she's uh, she's actually one of my favorite modern artists right now in the in the music world. Who are your like three that you're really jiving on right now? Well, it's always Prince. Oh, always. Uh, and then there's this uh, metal station called Old School Metal on Spotify. So I pretty much listen to uh, those alternatively or alternately. And uh, it's got some, both of them. The, the the old school metal has some pretty good stuff on it. Stuff I've, right. some, some new stuff that I never heard before, and some classics. Right. Um, so Peter, last time you were so not the first time you came on the podcast. SideQuestFitness dot com slash Peter hyphen Baker. If you want to check out that first episode, uh, or you can scroll down and find it on iTunes. Um, I'm starting to realize I'm nearing like 200 episodes, Peter, which is getting kind of crazy. Um. And I have to like reference all of these things that I keep forgetting. I like, I can't give a number because once I add an episode, it's not that number anymore. Um, and now I just forgot what I was, I was going to ask. Oh, uh, so last time you were on, uh, it was me, you and Tanner nerding out over star Wars before rogue one came out, uh, the, the week of its release. Uh, and since then rogue one has come out. We have seen, uh, we got the title for the last Jedi, which looks red and dark and like, Maybe maybe the Sith are coming back. We're on, we're on a comeback tour, baby. On a comeback tour, um, and then we got the trailer, which uh, I honestly thought the poster was better than the trailer because um, the poster. It was a teaser trailer, though, so we have to wait for the actual trailer to. Uh... But that, like, I mean, a teaser trailer to me is like thirty seconds, um, and it's like, it, it, yeah, they didn't give away a lot of the story, but a teaser trailer is like. Uh, um, sort of just giving you like one shot or a shot that's like in that world, um, and just sort of like coming soon. Um, but that to me was like a full trailer, but I guess you can call it a teaser trailer. Um, so what do you think of Rogue One? Man, I fucking loved Rogue One. That was a scorched earth thrill ride from start to finish. So you didn't see any issues with it? Uh, like some people online. 
Uh, and some people just really look too hard for issues. Some people thought the writing was not good and that the characters were flat, but maybe they didn't want you to get too attached to the characters because they're all fucking dead. So that's a spoiler. <laughs> so if you haven't seen it yet, um, well, now you know. If you haven't seen it yet and you're listening to my podcast, that's a little questionable. Well, yeah, very much so because it's been out. I mean, it's been out, God, yeah. since December. It was on my flight back from uh, from Kansas City, and I didn't watch it because I started to watch uh, Assassin's Creed and only got an hour in before the plane landed. So, um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like when people, I didn't mind it. Um, I thought for a first movie away from uh, the Skywalker saga, it was in the universe and it felt like Star Wars. Uh, very much there there was war and then there were no um there were more gray lines than black and white lines of yeah and and i'm surprised like that's what surprised me the most because i was i've been really worried that this entire time you know disney would would and it's not that they like put the kibosh on on any of marvel's movies which i've been really really happy for but i know they've they've made some changes that i don't necessarily agree with um some of them comic book nerds would like some people got upset about um the mandarin and i was like first off two things one it's like the way he's presented in the comics is just it would not work on a movie like it would it just wouldn't work in that universe it wouldn't make sense and two china is like one of the largest uh markets in the world um like that like Disney, they will literally be like, no, fuck you. Your movie's not allowed in here. Like they kind of had to like do some of that stuff to get to that market. So like I get it on an economics standpoint, but you know, um, and I know people felt that way about, uh, Dr. Strange as well. Cause, um, you know, it, it brought up a whole bunch of, of issues. Um, but I don't think that I don't, Peter, please feel free to jump in. I feel like I'm talking. You are talking, but it is your podcast. No, I really, um, I really enjoyed Doctor Strange a lot, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. I thought it was a pretty good movie, but um, I don't know. Like, if people want to bitch about the, well, one thing that everybody bitches about is, oh man, they're destroying the um, the expanded universe uh, as far as Star Wars goes. But I'm one of those uh, guys. Yeah, you can't really bitch about that because um, they did the new Fifty Two, which erased the, the old timeline. Now they did another. Uh, reboot of that uh, DC Rebirth, I think it's called. So comic books do that shit all the time, and uh, you know it's all good. We still have yeah, the stories. That's that's true, and I and I I I think what what irked me with that is that it, they're bringing back um they're being they're bringing back Thrawn. Well, yeah, they brought back Thrawn, but the Thrawn series is just so fucking good. Except I, I was a little bummed. I was a little bummed at the ending because it just kind of felt like it kind of felt like Timothy Zahn was like, oh, um, I guess I have to end this. And he just gets kind of punked out like there's no like cool like death. It's just, you know, his right hand dude just stabs him and it's kind of like, fuck, come on, give him give him something better than that. Um, but what what I hate is that. Now that means there's no Darth Revan, there's no Darth Malak. Like they go back and redo all the Knights of the Old Republic stuff, and I and I know that the universe expanded and there's a whole lot of things. And obviously, you can't do the Thrawn series because Leia can't be pregnant. <laughs> like I get all of that. I'm glad they brought him back in, but I do want to see some of the Old Republic, like the Knights of the Old Republic stuff, come in. Yeah, and. Um... Fuck, for all we know, they could come back and say, oh, yeah, that's canon because there's a lot of it. So we don't know. There's a lot a lot of stuff. A lot of yeah. stuff they could work. Yeah. A lot of, uh, lot of rich, layered history of the uh, galactic empire and before and beyond that they could work with. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like humans, the, the myths of humanity, you know, they've, uh, they've all been updated over time and given different faces and names and uh, personalities. So, you know, I guess you got to do it with our modern myths, um, which, you know, uh, yeah. Anyways. Uh, so what do you, what do you, what are you driving on right now? What do you, what are you reading or watching that? Like you're really nerding out on. Uh, well, they took Dr. House MD off of uh, Netflix, which kind of sucks. 
because we watch that all the time. But that's not a big deal. But I have started the uh, Wise Man's Fear since I did finish The Name of the Wind. And I find that I'm breezing right through that um, whenever I do pick it up as opposed to um, this incredibly slow rate at which I've read The Name of the Wind. Where are you in A Wise Man's Fear? Well, I want to say maybe like 100 pages in right now. You will slow down a lot more in that. I, I still have been- I still haven't even met some of the characters you guys were referencing uh, in our text message yet. Oh, like yeah, Pente? You, yeah. You just it that is that is like eight hundred some pages on. Um, it is. It. I personally, I like a name of the wind more than a wise man's fear, um, because it just it. Like Nick, Nick Sorrell and Tanner and I were talking about it and Nick was like, it feels like he's got so much to say that I don't see how he can wrap it up in one more book. You know, like I'll probably George R. R. Martin and, uh, extend it out, uh, ad infinitum. I, well, who, who, who knows? Who knows? Um, I hope not. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a very well-written book. I mean, just to, in his writing, the way he, uh, the writing create, it's fantastic. Oh, just the way he creates sentences and what the word and just the what he paints. Oh, I, I, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed at, at, at reading it. Um, all right. So, so you're doing that and, uh, are you, you gaming, doing anything? Uh, no, I recently, you know, months ago played the, um, I played Arkham City and then Arkham Origins. Uh, I tried to play Arkham Asylum, the original Batman game, and that uh, somehow it lost all my save data, and I got pissed, and I haven't touched it since. But those other two games, those other two games were fantastic, especially Arkham Origins. Uh, see, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't play that one. I have a uh, now. See, and this is sad. That this is a little bit of of a confession. I didn't want to originally play Fallout New Vegas because it wasn't made by Bethesda. It just so happened to turn out to be one of the best Fallout games ever made. Um, so I was kind of wrong in that. Because usually, like, when a when a company does, like, a big hit and then another company takes, like, the sequel or, like, a third se- or whatever, because the other company is working on, like, something else, I've never been a big fan of, uh, of what they did. Because um, it just didn't feel, it didn't feel like, the heart and soul of the original creative team was there, so it was sort of missing uh, that nuance. Um, That's what the your solid game is going to be like. You think so? Well, Hideo Kojima doesn't work for Konami anymore. Of course, it's. I yeah I yeah yeah I I guess it would be kind of like uh, Sony doing a Zelda game. Uh, Miyamoto not not uh, uh, not being a part of it, which which you know would be weird and uh, not follow the story. But um, but apparently have Solid Snake in it, from what I hear, or uh, Big Boss, or any of the established characters that we know and love. So, you, so all right. So how? Because I know you're a big Metal Gear fan. Um, do if there were a Metal Gear game. That and now, granted, this is to say they would make one season of it, but they're not because it's Netflix. If Netflix were to make like one Metal Gear game into a into one story arc, like just one season, what game would you pick? Well, as a as a fan of the games, I would probably pick Part Three, Snake Eater. Yeah, Snake Eater, because that was probably my favorite of the games. Uh, story wise, I just liked the time period and stuff like that. Um. As for what most people would want to see, I don't know. They couldn't really make the original one on PlayStation into a into a, a series because it's a lot like Escape from L.A. or Escape from New York or one <laughs> of the movies. Like, right. I mean, it really is. You've seen those movies, right? You've seen Escape a from New York? Re- yeah, I would like a really long fucking time ago. I think the last one I saw was like, Kurt Russell surfing a like wave over the Statue of Liberty. I think that was Escape from New York. All I remember is I saw that scene and I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. So if you watch Escape from LA, I'm pretty sure it's Escape from LA that 
is very much like I mean the guy's name is Snake Pliskin. Nah. Yeah, so so I mean it's, there's a lot of similarities there. So what they would probably wind up doing and if the, I mean Netflix's uh shows are pretty good, they could probably just they could probably do a mixture of all of them. Kind of like they did for The Godfather 2 where they had the the prequel sequel thing going on. Yeah. So they could theoretically do that with a Metal Gear Solid show, I think, and tie it in. Because it's all tied in anyway. True. 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 It is. It is. Um, what I, or I want somebody to do a series based on The Count of Monte Cristo. All right. You've seen that. You've read that, right? Um, no. No. I've, 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 I'm catching up on all of that stuff. Um, God damn it. No. Dude, I just, I, I, you know, it's, I didn't read the classics. It's a, it's a classic revenge tale of a guy in France. Uh, he gets wrongfully put in prison and he manages to literally claw his way back into yeah. the life. Oh, I know. Even, I, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I know the storyline. I just never actually read it. Yeah. So I think that would be a, a good story to have, especially now that they have the medium they do to make so many TV shows and all that you know, out of books, like, you know, like they did with Game of Thrones. I think Game of Thrones paved the way for that and they did really well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's what I'm. All right. All right. Um, I want to kind of keep talking gaming, but I don't really know. uh, I'm not that huge of a gamer. Like I, I get, I get those select few games and then that's it for me. So like Metal Gear Solid, like I'm behind on Zelda, even though I love the series, I'm behind on Resident Evil. I haven't even played part five yet. Oh. I love this series, though. I okay. heard five stuff, but I heard the I heard the latest one is really good. But so, you I, know, I like I, those things. I will tell you about Resident Evil because uh, I know you still have a 360. Don't get six. Um, five is kind of like <sighs> I mean, it's a good ending for Wesker if you're a fan of Wesker. Um, oh, that's some- yeah, but it's also just like. They tried to do some new thing. They just they, they they made it an action game. It, it went away from being like a survivor horror and uh, and you know four kind of moved it in that direction, but four still did some things that made it feel like Resident Evil. Four is really good. Oh, four is fantastic. Yeah, I really like that. And uh, so so those are the games I get hyped about, like like that um, Super Smash Brothers Melee because Melee is the best one out of all of them. Agree. Yeah, and uh, people tell me I play Young Link and that he's hacked. I disagree, but whatever. All right, so so you're a you're a Young Link fan. Why like why Young Link? Because he drinks milk when he taunts you. <laughs> why not? Why not? Like like, but what about his moves? What about his character? Do you like more than Adult Link or, or anyone else? And that that combo where you whirlwind him and then. Uh, you, you, you hit him up with the, the three hit. You know what I'm talking about? I know what you're you talking just, about. Yeah, you get that three hit going, and then you jump up, and then you, you poke him with the sword, and then uh, and then you come up from a top ledge, and you give him that that ass pound with the sword. It's actually a knee pound, but I always called it an ass pound whenever I was like a kid because yeah. I thought he was, like pile driving his sword into their head. You know, like in the wrestling, <laughs> it, but that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. but then you look closer; he's using his knee with the sword, but it's, it's more like a tombstone pile driver. Yeah. Like, uh, I think uh, in fitness terms, it technically would be a half kneeling sword. <laughs> pile driver. But, um, so, I mean that, and I mean, if they got enough life down, like that thing could knock him off the screen and he's got the hook shot, which is yeah. great. So if you're falling, you could use the hook shot to get back up on the ledge. Yep. Yeah. Which is fantastic. So did you, did you all- play, um, brawl? I did not like brawl. It's too clunky what? for. So too 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 clunky. Like, but what about it? Clunky, too slow. Uh, that's really it, man. That that kind of. It's almost like they regressed back to the original Smash Brothers with that one, but with better graphics and more characters. I don't. I don't know if the speed the speed felt okay with me. I think. Um, what bugged me was that it felt like all the brawl levels were like there's shit going on, there's shit going on, and I'm like. Can you just give me a level where shit doesn't happen, where I can just fight somebody and I don't have to worry about some like 
random thing coming across the screen and hitting me while I like I'm down and knocking me off the board because that's kind of shitty. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just that's something about it. I did like the one that they made after that though. Then uh, that oh, was the, like the new one for the Wii U. I haven't played. I played a little bit of that. Uh, it was for the Wii U and the 3DS, but since I have neither system, uh, I have not gotten to play it. Um, but they added, they added some really, really good characters. Yeah, they they did, and um, I, I played that. I'd like to play that again soon, actually. Who? Uh, no, and we'll we'll continue with Melee because I agree. I think Melee is the best one. Um, so, so everyone, I need you to go back in your mind while I ask this question. What character in Melee would you prefer that, like, they completely erase from the game and never had in there? Oh, man, that's tough. I don't know. I like all of them. Like, everybody's got their, their thing that makes them a good character. Like, Young Link has all that shit, and Luigi has the wave dashing. Uh, Peach has the turnips and that pan and the golf club. Yeah. That shit's hilarious. Like, uh, I don't know, maybe Ganondorf because he's slow and he fucking sucks. Yeah, but if he hits you, dude, but see, he's like, he's like, I don't want to say he's more powerful than a boy, Captain Falcon, but he's just, I mean, he's, it's the same character build. Um, yeah, he's got the same mechanics as Captain Falcon, but none of the coolness. He doesn't say Falcon punch and he's not <laughs> fast. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, he's, he's, I think he's, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong via email, that's fine. But from what I remember when I played, I think he's even I, slow, like because Donkey Kong was pretty slow and Bowser was slow. But I think he's even slower than Bowser. Uh, yeah, Ganondorf is slower than Bowser. Yeah. Um. All right. We, all right. So in the original sixty four game, who was who was your your Smash Bro? Honestly, uh, it was probably Link. But I didn't play it enough to really get a feel for it because I didn't have a sixty four. I had a PlayStation, and you know, growing up poor. You don't get a lot of uh, you. You don't get a lot of options and systems. Yeah, so I just had the PlayStation, and none of my friends had it, so I didn't play the original Smash Brothers until until well after I'd been playing Melee for a while. But I okay. liked Link. Whatever. All right, all right, all right. So Peter, we're going to end it on on a <laughs> on a fun note, just because the question came into my head, uh, and I just, whatever. Um, so, Peter, you know, I, I'm friends with you on Facebook, and I know you post a lot about, about uh, you know, glute training and all that. What is your obsession with butt stuff, man? Your obsession with butts. I mean, I think, I think glute training is the best thing you can ever do for your physique uh, and your lift numbers. But, you know, you're always uh, posing in those weird spandex pants that you have. An attention grab, of course. <laughs> but um, everything I do is an attention grab. I'm a Slytherin, for God's sake. True. Um, you know, seeking approval and all that. Plus it is a, it is a good part of my build. I'm also eventually going to, um, put out a product, uh, called supplemental butt stuff that, um, you know, will have pretty sweet training program for that very purpose. So this is all kind of like a build up for that. Okay. What's the s- supplemental butt stuff? Uh, oh, is- it- Exactly like it sounds. So you would take these workouts, you would tack them on because they're not going to be very long. You tack them on at the end of whatever day you are. So if you're going and you're bench pressing and doing your flies and your triceps and all that, you throw in a butt workout to get more volume, to get more hypertrophy. So what I noticed in like a lot of amateur uh, figure bikini competitions, the ones who win are the ones who have butts. Or they're really tall and they have really defined shoulders, either or. The ones who lose, or sorry, the ones who do not place as well uh, have no butts. So, you know, and plus, having put this program on a couple of power lifters and Olympic lifters, um, it's helped their numbers. It's, it's helped them be more aware of their glutes firing, and uh, it's helping them lift better. So... I did not expect that to happen uh, because it was originally just specifically aesthetic. So that's a nice unintended consequence. So, yeah, and it's not leaving them feeling like a burnt out piece of shit at the end of the day when they do it. So, you know, you add it on, you still feel great and uh, you get get some more volume and thereby getting more gain. Awesome, dude. Um, I think think we agree because I do this with a lot of my clients. It tends to be very gluten hammy 
focused yeah. because most of us sit far too much. Um, but uh, but I like that. I like that. I might have to. Uh, I might have to come to you for some uh, supplemental butt stuff then. I'll email you the program, and then you know, <laughs> see if you like. Sure, I'll uh, I'll do some uh, I'll do some more butt stuff. I love butt stuff. Um, I just love that I'm saying butt stuff, and everyone who's listening to this right now is like, "I, Robbie, when are you going to say anal sex?" Well, I just said it. Um, because <laughs> you know, anytime you post something, and that's like the first thing people think about. I'm like, no, I'm talking about training your glutes. The best kind of butt stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, and 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 this was something I got from from John. He's actually from Roman. He's very good at um. He's very good at relating literally everything back to uh, butt sex. And, uh, you know, it's something I do. So I try to do the same because, you know, he's basically my hero. <laughs> true. True. Peter, uh, we're, we're coming up on an hour, so we're going to we're gonna close out here. Um, anything you want to discuss before we leave uh, and head out? Anything else you want to nerd back on or, or nerd out on or, uh, or anything you want to leave the audience with? I think uh, if I had one thing to say, it'd be, Go see Logan because it's one of the best movies I've seen this year. And next time I'm on, I'm going to spoil the shit out of it. So, you know, that <laughs> I wait, it's May. I feel like people have had two months to see Logan. Like, I think it's OK to spoil the shit out of it. Um, just in case you don't know, you should probably turn your volume off right now or hit pause. So I'll give you like five I, seconds to pull your phone out of your pocket. Um, but you pretty much knew that when he was like, this is my last movie as like as Logan you knew he was going to die. Like we all knew that going into it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean he can't come back since it took place later in the future. See, that's the question that I want answered is what universe is that movie in? Ah, well, here's the thing. Director himself and the writer, he said that he didn't give a shit that he made continuity errors. He wanted to tell a good story. So that's why it references a little bit of everything. So for the director, it doesn't matter. Okay. He just wanted to right. tell a good story. Do they, and I don't think they ever mentioned it, and I tried to look it up. Do they ever mention the Westchester incident? Like, whatever happened with uh, Professor X that, like, made him go fucking crazy? Uh, I believe they touched on it. I don't know if they went in depth about it, but I can't remember. Yeah, but but they never say, like, it's just like, what it sounds like is, like, Professor X went ape shit in Cerebrum and, like, killed a bunch of people with his mind. And then... Logan like took him away. Like that's what it sounds like, but like I don't they never explain. There's um also some stuff in Apocalypse that I think references what happened in Logan as well, but I didn't see Apocalypse, so I can't really speak to that. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen Apocalypse either because everyone was like, It's awful, don't go see it, which depresses me because I really like Apocalypse as a character. People said that about Batman versus Superman too, and it was fucking great. <sighs> we're not going into that debate again. I've heard the director's cut actually is a lot better in that the... We, we uh, talked we, about it last year. We talked about the movie last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, Adam Ali said the director's cut makes the movie make more sense because like what he saw in the theaters, he was like, I, I, like I'm like i confused about why they made that choice. But the director's cut kind of fills all that in. So, um, Cool. Awesome. Well, guys, if you haven't seen Logan... Um, well, now you know what happens. I won't tell you what happens, but you should go see it because it's awesome. Um, and Peter's right. Definitely the best movie I've seen this year. Uh, but I'm going to see Guardians this weekend. When this goes up, it'll be like the second weekend it's been in the theater. So uh, I'm excited for that. But Peter, thank you so much for coming back on, brother. And I, and I look forward to having you back on soon. Likewise, man. Have a wonderful day. Step up and you gotta get it fitness Post Rob at the moment and the quest is You gotta check in and wreck it, you're breaking personal records And with the help of the guests you won't be guessing on the lessons That's a plus five fears Got a low key bamf right here You wanna meet him, there's no better way to greet him Than to strike a boss pose, take a look into the mirror